What the heck? There's no way to make that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what the heck? So if you guys didn't already guess, this video is going to be about sort of visualizing objects in 3D space. Like finding something in real life or online, and then just saying, how can I remake this in Blender? We're going to learn about dissecting objects, and sort of how to visualize meshes as a part of a whole object. And hopefully you guys will get a lot better at that. Now we're going to start with this Dial soap bottle that I found. Dial, if you're down for a sponsorship, I, I could really use some chocolate milk money. Right off the bat, I can already see three different components. The first is going to be obviously this big orange body. That's all one mesh because it's all connected. It's all like one part. The second component is going to be this little cylinder at the top going all the way to about there. As you can see, this follows basically the same pattern as extruding and insetting a regular cylinder. So I added in a cylinder to demonstrate that. If I just move this face up, I can now inset and extrude a couple different times to basically copy the pattern at the top of that. And of course, a little bevel makes things look more realistic. And now this top component can just be a cube. You can take a regular cube and deform it with a couple loop cuts. This just makes the thing look a little bit more like a soap dispenser and not as much like a cube. I might even bevel this. Now I'm going to select those back faces and go into a 2D view. And now I can just extrude and press R on my keyboard to rotate and basically follow the reference image. If I follow it all the way up, it looks pretty good. And obviously you could easily make a soap bottle just knowing this stuff. Erase, 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 erase. Now before I move on, I'd like to take a couple minutes to talk about dial soap. But potential uh, sponsor for this video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dial soap is a wonderful soap that's great at cleaning bacteria and doing other things that a soap does. It, 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 it's really good at that. The prices are reasonable. The designs look sick. The website is very, very visually appealing. They have social media accounts. And yeah, if you're, if you're looking for a new brand of soap, Dial is your way to go. Please, Dial, I really need money. Item number two is going to be this knife. Right off the bat, once again, I can see three components. The first one is going to be the handle. This whole little bit right here. It's all connected. It's all extruded from each other. These little indents can just be loop cuts that are beveled and extruded in on themselves. And overall, it's just really easy to turn that into one mesh. The second is going to be this guard handle. This whole thing can be a cube that's just traced over the handle. And these little holes right here can just be boolean modifiers. And the last component is obviously going to be the giant blade up here. Since this whole thing can just be a cube that's traced around the blade in the image, and these little holes right here can just be loop cuts. Let's do something more challenging. We're gonna do this robot dog. Well, maybe not the entire thing since that'd take a little while, but mm, part of it. This whole bottom piece can just be a cube. As you can see, if you just scale a cube a little bit, bevel it here and there, it's pretty easy to recreate. And likewise, this is also just a beveled cube. This whole arm up here is all just one cylinder with different extrusions in it. This little coil can be made using a simple circle spring technique. If you just add in a circle, move it around a little bit, and give it a screw modifier, you can make something pretty similar to that. This bit is definitely more difficult to recreate, as you can see there's a lot going on. I would say it's mostly just one cube, but as you can see there's a lot of indents and stuff. Most of these you can recreate with boolean modifiers, there's a couple cylinders here you could add in, but most of that is just going to be tracing a cube over the original image. This is where the modeling definitely gets more difficult, and it can be a lot harder to piece out components. So obviously down here, we easily just had a cylinder. Like, it's easy to see, that's a cylinder, that's where I have to put a cylinder, that's a cube, that's where I have to put a cube. But if you get to something like this shape, it's a little bit more difficult because it's really hard to see individual meshes in a shape like that. My approach to this shape would basically be tracing a cube over the entire thing. If you add enough loop cuts, you can just trace out this entire piece as a singular cube. It would take a little while, but you know, 3D modeling takes some time. And then all these holes in the center can just be boolean modifiers off of that original cube. And then these little cylinders here can just be cylinders stacked into the original cube. These little joints back here can just be extruded cylinders. This block here will just be a cube. These wires right here you could recreate with a curve modifier or just simply extruding a cylinder over them. This bit right here can all be one mesh. As you can see it's basically just a sphere with a little bit cut out of it. This can actually be recreated very easily. If I just take a UV sphere right here, I can go into wireframe mode, select all of the bottom faces just like that, and now if I press GZ it'll extrude 
screwed them all out and we've basically recreated the shape right there. These bolts as well could just be cylinders. If I add in a cylinder here, you can actually go to the bottom menu and change the vertice count to just six. Now it appears nice and hexagonal, just like the parts up there. But as you can see, 3D visualization is just really trying to see things in terms of cubes and cylinders. Like if I moved enough vertices around, could I make this out of a cube? If I added enough cylinders, I don't know, could I recreate what I'm seeing? It takes a lot of practice, so if I were you, I would just save a ton of really complex images like this robot, and you basically want to break down the image into multiple parts, kind of like what I was doing with the soap bottle and the knife earlier in the video. It takes a lot of practice, and it can take a while to get good at. I'll definitely be posting more videos about this in the future though, since it's a pretty important part of getting better at 3D modeling. So stay tuned for some of those, but in the meantime, I'll see y'all later.